And everybody said, praise the Lord. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. Why don't we clap our hands and thank him for his mercy and for his goodness and for his grace. And let's put our voice with it now just so the devils will hear us because they hate a church that lifts up their voice and magnifies the name of the Lord Jesus. Have your way tonight, we pray, almighty God, in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. amen. If you love the bishop and Sister Foster, would you get loud and clap your hands? Thank the Lord. Praise God. Love them very, very much. Appreciate them very, very much. And thankful to have them in our life and in our family. We're so glad to be here tonight. Thank you for all the hospitality you have shown us. Joshua chapter 2 and verse number 1 and then verse 15 through 21. Joshua chapter 2, verse 1, and verse 15 to 21. I have heard from the Lord. Amen. One person said amen. Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into a harlot's house, named Rahab, and lodged there. Verse 15, she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall. She dwelt upon the wall. She said unto them, Get ye to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you. Hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be returned, and afterward may ye go your way. The men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath, which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window, which thou didst let us down by. And thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. It shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head. We will be guiltless. Whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. And if thou utter this our business, then we will be quit of thine oath, which thou hast made us to swear. Verse 21, she went according to your words. She said, according to your words, so be it. She sent them away, and they departed, and she bound the scarlet line in the window. And I want to preach to you tonight, hanging on by a thread. Hanging on by a thread. Lord Jesus, I take authority over the whole atmosphere right now. I worship you, what you're about to do. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I speak life into every house, every home, every marriage, every situation that's troubling. I speak life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Have your way tonight. Anoint me and anoint the people also to be in one mind and in one accord. We're ready for you to be you and do what only you can do. We give you all the praise, all the glory in advance in Jesus' name. Release the gift of faith now, I pray, in this atmosphere. Would you clap your hands as you're doing to the Lord one more time and expect God to do something tonight. In Jesus' name. You may be seated. Things do not always go as they are planned. I'm pretty sure if you asked Rahab's mother and father when she was a child, whatever dream they had for her, because parents always want the best for their children, I'm pretty sure that the lifestyle she ended up living was not the dream that they had for her. I'm pretty sure that her being a harlot was not on the dream agenda when she was a little child. No parent would want that for their children. And yet she has found herself through pain and through situations in life now living the lifestyle 
of the world and the worst corner of it. And she is now doing things and living ways that would make any person that lived for God ashamed. And now, not just that, but the children of Israel are marching in toward her city to take the city. And the walls are about to fall down. And the worst part of it is she lives on the wall. She is literally living in the path of God's wrath. She is right in the way of where God is going to demolish and God's going to execute and God's going to dominate. And she is the worst of the worst of Jericho and she's living in the worst place possible. You would think that this was the person that would go first when the walls fell down. That when Joshua said shout and the walls come down the first one to die would be the one on the top of the wall who was living the worst lifestyle in the city she should have been destroyed with everyone else but God and you can pull her name out and put your name in right there. No matter what the lifestyle you were in, no one in this room deserved the mercy of God. No one deserved to be saved. Don't patty cake it and act like you've always been holy. Everyone in here deserved to go to hell but God. <laughs> when Joshua sent the two spies in to see the land of all the houses they could have knocked on any door in the entire city and they just happened to knock on the door of the worst of the worst people in the city and when they knocked on their door destiny found her just like God found me and God found you never get over the fact that you didn't find Jesus Jesus found you too many people act like I found the Lord and that's why I have a right to act like a spiritual statue you didn't find God God's mercy found you God's blood found you God's salvation power found you is there anyone thankful that he found you I don't care what it was you were bound by I wish you'd get the flesh out of the way right now and let apostolic anointing hit you in the spirit God found you and God rescued you let the teenagers shout unto God right now. Let hell hear the young people shout unto God. There's something about knowing that he found me in my addiction, in my failures, in my weaknesses. <laughs> and he found Rahab. And these two men viewed the city and she hid them in her house in the on the rooftop and the enemy was trying to find them and, and there's something special about Rahab in the eyes of God to man she's terrible to man she's the lowest of all but to God there's something about about her that stands out from everyone else in Jericho what is it about Rahab that makes her so appealing to God let's go back to the Bible in Joshua chapter 2 and verse number 10 and verse number 11 this is where I find God looking where men don't look Rahab said we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what he did under the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side, Jordan, Sihon, and Og, whom he utterly destroyed. Verse 11, this is where it gets awesome. She said, and as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt, neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. Ready? For the Lord your God. He is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. You know why God liked her? Because in her sinful state, she still declared that there is a God and he is going to have power over everything. That's what hell cannot stand about some people, even though they're lost right now. Don't give up on them because they still acknowledge there is a God and he still has power. 
power. She said he's not just God, but he's God in heaven above and he's God in earth beneath. In other words, when I look up, I see him. When I look out, I see him. When I look in, I see him. There's something about recognizing that we are powerless without the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. And Rahab said, I know your God is the real God. She knew that before they got there. That's why God had them go to her door. She knew his, this, this God. She knew nothing about him. She didn't know his law. She didn't know his standards. She didn't know about his holiness. But she knew he was real. And God said, all I need to save someone is for them to acknowledge that I am real and that I can do anything. That's why you can't give up on the worst family member that you've got in your life right now. Because all it takes is one encounter where they recognize, yes, he's real. And if they'll acknowledge he's real, he can get on the war path to deliver them and save them. <laughs> Rahab. Oh, she said he's God over everything. And when you come, watch this. I love, I love what she thinks here. She's no fool. She might be a terrible person, but she's no fool. She said, and when you come back, I want you to save me and my mama and my dad and everyone we have. Rahab was the first one. Go big or go home. She said, I believe you have the power to get me out of this and save my whole family too. Oh, I love that kind of faith right there that says I'm not just going to get out and be the only one. I love when people get out of the world and then they grab their family and say, you're coming too. There's something great going on at Dallas First Church. I want to bring the loved one. Last week we had a family show up and three of the family members were baptized in Jesus' name. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's apostolic. When dad says we're all getting in the water. When mom says we're all coming out of drugs. And she said, when you come back, would you get us out? Watch this and deliver us from death. She cries for deliverance. And you know why God can't reject that? Because a few years earlier, his own people were bound in Egypt and they cried for deliverance. And he came down and rescued them. And he's the same God to the saint as he is the sinner. And so it doesn't matter where you are right now. If you cry out for deliverance, whether you're holy or holy, or this is your first service ever, God hears the cry of people that say, I need you. Man can't fix me. My boss doesn't have the answer. The doctor can't do enough surgery. I need a God moment where only God will get the glory for what only God can do. <laughs> and she said, we need our family saved. And the men said, as she lowered them down through the window all the way outside the walls has somebody come help me with this has she wow my wife got a good one it's all the way down to the floor thank you they went all the way down the red cord thank you man let's lay on the floor they went all the way down the rope and she said hey now don't forget to save me and my family She's got faith like I wish some apostolics had. Well, God can save your family. Well, I've been praying for so-and-so for 19 years. Rahab said, look, we're all dying, but God's going to save my family somehow. I don't know how he's going to do it, but he's going to do it. I like that kind of faith. I like it when guests show up and have more faith than church people. 
I do. Because certain guests show up and they're living in the gates of hell. And so they don't have time to critique everything. They're not, they've not been around long enough to criticize every little move. They just know I need an answer from God. And I've got faith that only God. Give me that kind of faith in the church. I'll show you a church of miracles instantaneously. Just God can do it. That's all we need to believe. She said, hey, when you come back, save my family. Now, their response is amazing. Their response was this. That cord you just let us down with, if you keep that cord in the window, when we come back, whoever's in your house we will not kill them. We will save them. If they're not in the house, we're going to take them out. But if they're in the house, we're going to protect them. As long as you have a thread of hope. And she ties that knot. And they crawl down. And now, watch this. This is, this, this is the God told me this today. He said, the shift is so difficult when you go from having all the faith in the world to asking for great things, asking for your family to be saved, to now hanging by a thread. It was easy to say, save us. But now, you're only going to be saved, Rahab, if you hold on to that thread in the window. She was just having huge faith a moment ago. Save my family. Your God's the real God. You can save us all. He's gonna, I know your God's going to take out this city. I've got faith in him. Have you ever had faith one moment? And then be hanging by a thread the next moment. Oh, I wish I could preach it like I feel it. Have you ever been in the altar call and with your, your fellow believer said, yeah, it's my night for a miracle. And God's going to save my family. And God's going to bless us financially. And God's going to heal. And God's going to come through and you're shouting. And then you get in the car. Oh, I'm preaching better than you're shouting. And you go from big faith to barely holding on faith. That's why you can't, that's why you should never skip services during a revival. Because when you're barely hanging on, when you come in here, that's what tightens your grip on the rope. When you're about to fall apart, you feel something in the atmosphere. Say, don't quit yet. God's not through with you. God's not forsaken you. God's not walking away from you. She said, this little rope, I've got to keep that in the window. I've got to keep the rope in the window. But what if the enemy, what if the king, what if the soldiers see the rope, the thread? And so every day, you can't tell me this, every day she didn't go check that knot. Looking down, hope they don't see. Looking out the wall edge, hope no one sees it. Looking. If the wind blew, you know she took another knot and wrapped it around. I would anyway. My family's salvation depends on this thread. You need something to keep you focused on your deliverance. You need something to keep you focused on your miracle. You need something in the house that reminds you every day, hey, God's coming to do something in our family. Oh, I wish I had some mom and dad right now that would recognize your prayer life's not in vain. It's your thread that you keep tying every morning and you're letting hell know God has a plan for my family. Somebody shout, tie the knot. 
She checked that cord every day. We have to have something, something that we hold on to. If the devil gets in your head and tells you you're wasting your time praying, you're wasting your time fasting, you're wasting your time reading your Bible, what he's convincing you of is just chop the cord. Man, I'm feeling good right now. You know what the devil hates? When you do not care if the miracle happens today or not, I'm tying the knot just because if they show up today, I need the miracle ready. If they come in next week, I need to be prepared if they're coming 10 years from now. Can I say it like I feel it? An entire family can be saved if one family member is hanging on to a thread shataya of hope. I don't care what the devil's doing to your mom and dad, to your sister, to your child. Do not let go. You're the thread of their salvation. Showed up. Okay, so I got to keep the rope in the window, okay? Uh, Mom and Dad, I need you to come over. I need you to move in. What what are you talking about, Rahab? Well, the Israelites are coming, and they're going to destroy this city. But if we stay in the house and we have the cord, they're going to save all of us. Rahab, you sure? You sure you haven't lost your mind? You sure you're not crazy? Oh, just come on over, Mom. See, what the devil don't like is this. You keep checking on the loved ones, and they think, oh, Shatayan, they think you're just checking on them, seeing how they're doing, but you're checking on them holding on that cord. How you doing? Just thinking about you today. And that loved one has no idea. When you said that you were checking the cord, you're letting them know no matter what you're going through, you're not alone, loved one. There's always room at the house. So shut up. Whenever you get tired, whenever it gets rough, there's going to be your one name that comes to your mind, the one that keeps holding on to the thread. Someone in here is in here tonight because of another family member that held on to a thread of hope. Come on over, Dad. Come on over. One thread of hope for a whole family. And they all get in the house. I'm hurrying them fast as I can. They all get in the house. And here comes Joshua. And here come the Israelites. And they're marching around the walls. One day, two days, you know the story. Six days, no talking. Rahab, should we leave that? No, just stay in the house. Stay in the house. You know they passed by that wall, that spot, six days in a row. Is today the day we're going to get out? No. (laughs) When you can't get out, look out. And she just kept sitting there holding on, holding on. And when Joshua, on the seventh day, when they marched seven times around the city, they shouted. Now, I've never seen this in all my life. Maybe others have, but I've never seen this till today. And he told them, go get Rahab and everybody in her house and save her. He did not say, check and see if the cord's in the window. He did not say, if the cord's in the window, save her. You know why? The cord was a test. The cord was a test for her obedience. Joshua never was even worried about a cord. He was going to save her My word. the entire time. Can I break it down for you? While you're hanging on by a thread, God has planned the entire time. 
Oh, you're, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. While you're saying, Lord, if you see me, please come through. I can't hang on much longer. God has been planning the entire time to get you out of this. I wish somebody would shout right now while you're barely holding on because Joshua is coming. Jesus is coming with an answer. (laughs) Somebody shout, I'm hanging on by a thread. But it's only a test. I'm barely hanging on, but it's only a test. I don't know how much longer I can go through this, but it's only a test. Some of you are weary to worship right now. You're weary to shout about that because you're afraid the thread's going to break. The thread's not going to break. He just wants to know, are you going to be obedient? Are you going to be in the house? Are you ready to be delivered? He went further and got the two kids that knocked on the door. He said, go get her out. Get her dad out. Get her brethren out. Get her stuff out. Everything is getting delivered. He did not say, check and see if she's still holding on. He tested her. And the Lord is testing some of you right now. Man, I feel prophetic anointing up here. And you're barely holding on. And you shout up here and you cry out there. Oh, God, I need you to do something. I need you to come through. And what you think is a thread is a rope that's not going to be broken. He said, I see someone in that house who's been living right, who's been trying to save her family, who's been good to the church. You watch this. God's about to get people in this building that have paid tithes here and not attended here. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I feel the Holy Ghost. That's cute. That's cute. God's about to get people in this building that don't attend here regularly, but they blessed this church before. And because they blessed it, while they're barely hanging on right now, God has been planning their escape the entire Shotalamaha. Jericho is about to come down, but God is about to save those who are ready to be delivered. Do you, did you notice something? The walls fell flat, but somehow her house didn't. Apparently, God left something on the wall. Apparently, God didn't take all the walls out because had they done that, Rahab's house, which was built in the wall, would go down. But God didn't do that. God, I'm taking the walls out, but I'm going to say everything can be crumbling all around you. But when God brings you out, just because everyone on your left and on your right is losing their mind at your job or at your school, don't you lose your mind. God is is going to get you out. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. <laughs> she didn't lose her life. She didn't lose her family. She didn't lose her stuff. And she didn't lose her future. All because she held on to a thread of hope. Oh, I'm preaching to the church tonight. You're shouting for others getting baptized. And you're dancing while they get the Holy Ghost. And you're praying and you're fasting. And you've been giving. And you're excited for revival corporately. But at home... God, we need you to get a hold of our daughter, God. 
We need you to get a hold of our kid, God. We need you to intervene, God. And you come to church and you feel the faith of everyone. And you say, all oh, right, God's going to do it. Amen, God's going to do it. And you go home and say, oh. We need to check the rope. Okay, it's still there. Oh, they're still alive. Oh, God, save them. Oh, God, deliver them. Oh, God, come through. Oh, God, make a way. Oh, God, only you can do it. I'm just hanging on. You know what? You And you think you're so weak. I'm going to tell you something God showed me this week. You think you're so weak when you're barely holding on. The devil convinces us that we're so weak when we're barely holding on. Oh, it's not true. When Luke 18, when that woman came to the judge over and over for her miracle, and he said, you're bugging me. Didn't even believe in God. He said, but because she keeps holding on, because she keeps coming continually, I'm going to give her what she needs. And he said, shall I not do that and avenge you speedily? Now watch this. And the next verse, he says, when, nevertheless, when the Son of Man returneth, shall he find faith on the earth? What she calls barely holding on, God calls faith. Mm, I'm preaching right now. <laughs> the devil will tell you when you're barely holding on that you're weak, that you're pathetic, that you should be stronger, that you should be shouting more, that you should have more joy. But when you're barely holding on, God said, I call that faith like nothing else because I know he told him a satire. Peter, Satan, hath desired to have you, that he might sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. I was repenting to God this week. I was praying about something Bishop knows about. And I was like, God, forgive me for not being stronger. Forgive me for not having more faith. Forgive me for all these things. This is where this message came from. And God had been silent through this, this test for about four months, telling me what to preach to you and not talking to me the rest of the time. I'm just being very transparent. I hope that's okay. And I asked God. I said, forgive me, because he answered the prayer. And I said, God, forgive me for not, for not having the faith I should have had. And for the first time in four months, I heard him. And he said these words. But you held on. I rebuke every lying devil in your head and in your house and attacking your family right now that tells you that it's just because you're barely holding on that you're not pleasing God, that you should be farther along, that you should be up with the others. I curse that in Jesus' name. God's developing the gift of faith in you right now. He's developing great faith in you right now. That's why you're barely making it. That's why you're barely holding on. Oh, Bishop Ewing preached it because of the times several years ago, the power of holding on. He preached about that when you can't. He didn't preach about Rahab, but he preached about when you don't know what to do, just hold on. God loves nothing more than when you think God's forsaken you. Ready? You think God's forgotten, and you think God doesn't care, or God is displeased, but you still come to church on Saturday night anyway. Now, I know we're not shouting tonight, but I, I feel a Holy Ghost word right now. You are singing louder than you know right now in the enemy's camp and in heaven, heaven's choir. You are giving God more praise than you think you are. Some of you say, well, I'm just standing here in my pew right now. I'm barely, I, I staggered in here. And you think, God, well, I don't know how much longer I can go. You are doing greater than you think you are. You are stronger than you know you are right now. And be God for the Holy Ghost because you're here tonight. God wants you to know that there's power in and hanging on by a thread and when this is said and done you will be shouting and you will be dancing and you will be rejoicing and you will be praising God
Who am I preaching to right now? Would you be real in this building and give God real worship right now? Who am I preaching to? Don't be a statue just because your neighbor doesn't want you to praise God. Are you kidding me? God's been too good to you. God's been too good to you. God's made a way when there was no way. God brought you out. I like the new songs, they're awesome, but every once in a while, we need some, he brought me out of the miry clay to stir up in here. He set my feet. If it had not been for the Lord that was on my side. (laughs) If you're hanging on by a thread, would you raise your hand? If you're hanging on by a thread for a family member, for a report, for a breakthrough, for a new job, for a healing, for a miracle, for an answered prayer. Now do something even crazier. Come stand up here right now near the thread. Let the enemy know. Oh, the devil hates this right now. <laughs> I don't care if you shout or not. I hope you do. But, but I, it, it, there's something powerful. When a dad's coming down here with tears dropping out of his eyes because he knows only God can do what I need him to do. But I'm coming down anyway. If the devil's telling you it's not going to happen, would you raise your hand? If the enemy's telling you it's not going to work out, would you raise your hand? If the devil's telling you you're not going to have a miracle. Come on, Rahab. Check the rope. Come on, Rahab. Check the cord. Come on, Rahab. Check the thread. 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 Come on, Rahab. It's only a test. If I was you, I'd have my hands up. I'd have my mouth open. I'd grab that rope in the spirit right now. I'd grab that red thread. I'd grab that cord. And I'd say, oh, God, I'm not letting go. I'm not quitting. I'm not throwing in the towel. I'm not walking away. I need a miracle. Your test will have a testimony at the end of it if you just hold on. I am not prophesying to you that you'll be healed tonight. I'm not prophesying to you that your kid will pray through tonight. I'm not prophesying to you that everything will be blessed tomorrow at the job. But what I am prophesying to you is if you hold on, God will get the last word and God will get the final say. And in God's timing, he will sweep into your situation and he will intervene and he will heal and he will rescue and he will deliver hold on Rahab your help is on the way family members who didn't even believe in Rahab's God were saved because of Rahab's thread of hope. When the devil says you're wasting your time praying for him, you're the only thread of hope. And you hear me right now. That family member's going to say, if it had not been for the Lord and your prayers, 
Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel backsliders being called by God tonight. I feel like she I feel the Lord sending angels speaking in darkness. I see a long, dark road and the Lord piercing light down that road looking for life among the dead.